Hello everyone, in this video I wanted to do a nice little overview of my finished Beetleweight Combat Robot Psychotic Break. It's finally done and um, tomorrow morning it is going to enter its first competition at Rocky Mountain Gear Jam, so we'll see how that works. So let's bring it over to the workbench and get a closer look at Psychotic Break. So here you go, here is a much closer look at Psychotic Break. For anyone that just kind of wants a brief overview of this bot, this is a, um, I guess a mid cutter, horizontal cutter, tomb clone, I guess you could call it. And um, I've never really built a robot like this, so I decided to try my hand at something like this. And here is the result. Um, those of you that have been following me, you've probably seen uh, these aluminum frames that I've been machining. So the robot comprises of an aluminum frame on the top and an exact mirror copy on the bottom. You can see that the hole patterns and all the drill holes are the exact same. So for the motor on the bottom, you have the actual motor mounts here. And then for the top, you have a bearing that is pressed into this hole for the um, top of the motor. He uses a um, 3 16 inch blade, uh, so here is the backup of that. And um, this is relatively lightweight, I want to say this is only maybe 300 grams, so it's definitely under a pound. It's not the heaviest blade out there, but it is about a 12 and a half inch reach all the way across, so it's a relatively large blade. I think for comparison, this is the disc for crippling depression, and it actually does have a larger diameter than that. So it's a pretty big blade, and because of that, it hits pretty hard. I think this is somewhere in the ballpark, you know, theoretically speaking, of about one kilojoule, which is, you know, pretty decent. And top speed on the blade, I want to say, is... 250, 220 miles an hour, something like that. So just under the 250 mile per hour mark, which anything over 250 miles per hour, you actually don't really get much a bite and don't really actually hit. The weapon is also reversible. You can see that if you hit from one side, there's just kind of like this flat hammer side. And if the weapon is reversed, then you can actually hit with these little spikes. And all of these are perpendicular to the center rotation axis. So theoretically, when it comes around, you'll be hitting you know, perfectly on that little spike. And uh, both of these are AR500. In terms of materials, the top and the bottom plate are identical, as I said before. And these are both 6061 aluminum. Um, these are just kind of rough polished. Um, I just use like a Scotch-Brite pad and then some sanding blocks and then just a buffing wheel and some buffing compound on my drill press just to kind of get that yeah, nice little sheen out of it. The um, red body back here, this is printed out of Nylon G, which is a glass fiber reinforced nylon. So this is all 3D printed and I'll show you that a little bit more when I open it up. Um, but these are also perfectly mirrored. So you have one on the top and one on the bottom to form the body. And these are pretty flexible and pretty durable. So I don't expect these to get a ton of damage. And of course I have some extras of these. And let's see, um, other than that, um, you know, I'm just using some finger tech wheels here on the outside. I have several different sizes of this. And so the idea is these are the smallest wheels and I have, I don't know, maybe, you know, about a finger underneath um, the blade. I think this is maybe close to about a half inch. And what I can do is I can actually raise the wheels up and then start getting this blade closer and closer to the ground. I think at the closest to the ground, I'm somewhere around a quarter inch or a little bit less than a quarter inch just by using larger wheels in the back. And in terms of driving, I just kind of ride on um, these two screw heads right there and they're just kind of a button head cap screw. There is um, nothing else really exposed on the rest of the frame. All of these are counterboard into the frame top and bottom. So there's nothing else really exposed here. I think the last thing that I wanted to talk about before I open this thing up is the belt and pulley system. For those of you that have watched the previous videos, you've probably seen this, but here is the final belt configuration inside here. You might notice it's a little floppy and loose right now. This isn't the final, final assembly. I always film these overview videos because I take it apart in the overview, and then after this overview video is done, then I completely disassemble everything, loctite everything, tighten everything up. So. 
This is just more of a mock-up for looking at for the video. Um, I have a belt tensioner on the underside of here. Let me see if I can get a shot of that. Yeah, so I've got a bearing that basically screws into any of these three little holes right there. And that bearing is what tensions the belt. It is on the very least amount of tension right now. And you can see it's pretty loose. If I go to the tightest, it's quite tight. So I just need to put that over on the tightest for right now. And yeah, that's about it. So um, let's take off this top and I'll show you what's all inside. So taking this apart is pretty straightforward. You've got the four screws right there and then you have the one for the shaft up front. So I just take that one off and then undo these four. And then this whole top should just lift off. And there is a little bit of tension between these two points, so this kind of kind of snaps in place like that and lifts out. Bearing will pop out, and there you have the underside all chamfered and pocketed, and a better look at the belt tensioner. And then from here you can kind of see everything. This is the um, bearing that fits into the frame. There's a little bearing spacer here. And then you can see the pulley that is directly attached to the motor. And then we have the whole stack up over here with some shims and stuff. So take off the belt. And then this whole weapon stack just simply comes off. And I've shown this previously, but I'll just kind of reiterate. There are oil light bronze bushings in each side of this stack up. This bottom one uh, has these brass heat set inserts that hold the screws all the way around. Uh, this top one is a nylon 3D printed, then another carbon fiber nylon 3D printed, the weapon, and then the other. Each one of these is quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, and then 3 16 and then the rest of the space is made up with extra bushings and a couple of shaft spacers here. And then of course, as I mentioned previously, this is a half inch solid titanium shaft that has some keys in it, which coincide with the keys here on the top and bottom of the frame. So it kind of snaps in place and only has a little bit of wiggle. So when you tighten it down, the shaft doesn't spin. This whole assembly actually lacks quite a few fasteners. Um, this center body is not actually fastened in by anything other than friction. So I can pull this whole body up. As you can see, it's just basically sitting inside these standoffs, which are attached on the bottom. So this whole body can just lift off. And then the only thing really connecting it is the wires that go into the motor and the motor isn't attached to any of this frame at all. So I'm just gonna kind of push that back down. Uh, but we can separate these two halves very delicately. And once we separate these two halves, I'll show you the electronics inside. Okay, so inside here we have all the electronics and you can kind of see that everything is just press fit. There's actually no hardware whatsoever holding any of this in. So let me zoom in the camera a little bit more to give you a better look at the inside compartment. So this is the glorious inside. As you can see, it's pretty tight. Um, I have my modified gearboxes in here and they just kind of, I guess, press fit into these little recesses. The squares make that a lot easier, so they just press down in there. Um, in terms of electronics, I'm using these um, BL Heli 3221A Multistar. Check the links below, I'll have links for all this stuff in there. Um, I'm using two of these, these are 20 amp ESCs. Right here, I have a Multistar 51A, which is like a 50 or 60 amp BL Heli 32 ESC. I've got my radio here, and then all the wires come back and jumper all here. I'm using um, stacks of ring terminals. So there's just basically a screw through a bunch of ring terminals holding all of the screws bust together. And if we look back here, you've got the power LED and the power switch on the actual chassis. Let me grab this one. You can see there's one, two, three, four holes. The switch just kind of slides down into one of them over here. And then there's a little, um, I don't know, just these little like pieces that I 3D printed that 
clamp onto the um, LED to hold it in place. And all these little pins, you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, maybe I missed a couple. Uh, but there's all these pins around there and they correspond to the top section so that when you put them together, the two panels aren't just kind of flopping around, they're actually keyed together with these little metal studs and that holds it a little bit tighter. And we got the battery in the middle and that's really pretty much all there is to it. And finally, here is the end of the body. So this is the butt end and you can see I've got the LED and then the power switch. Yeah, that's right. LED and the power switch just kind of um, flush inside the end. They don't really stick out at all. They're just kind of these little recesses in the back. And because everything is mirrored, it doesn't really matter which way they go. So I can have these panels and just reuse them in any configuration. So yeah, there you go. I'd say overall, I'm pretty pleased with how Psychotic Break turned out. Um, I spent a lot more time on kind of the aesthetics and the design and also learning some new things about this whole process. The CNC machine that made this whole frame was new. I actually got that maybe halfway through the build, had to assemble that, learn that, and get that all taken care of. Um, so that was interesting. Other new things for me, I've never used AR500. Not really sure how it's going to hold up. It feels a lot more bendy and flexible than S7, but maybe that's a good thing. And, you know, for me doing kind of a belt driven horizontal spinner like this is pretty new. So we'll see how it holds up. I'm already kind of pleased with how it is. So even if it doesn't do well in competition, that's okay with me. I think the biggest issue that I'm going to have with psychotic break is going to be the pulleys. The tension needs to be so high so I don't just eat away and melt all my pulleys that it create some issues. I'm getting a lot of heat in the motor because of that. And who knows, we'll just have to see. I'm gonna play with that a little bit more after I do this overview. I've still got a few hours left in the day to play around with the pulleys and the tension on this belt. But generally speaking, everything looks like it's gonna work right. The drive is actually really solid on this. I was worried that with having so much weight up front and this big, you know, large heavy frame that it wouldn't drive well. But this thing actually zips around quite a bit. You'll see that in the fight recaps, but it's actually very maneuverable. The blade gets up to speed in, you know, under four seconds, something like that. So it's got plenty of power. It's plenty nimble. It is huge. Um, I mean, this thing is, about 18 or 19 inches from the back to the front. So it is going to be an intimidatingly large bot in there for a beetle. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to kind of give you some nice pretty action shots of this thing, or not really action shots, but just some nice pan shots just to give you a better idea of visually how it looks. And then hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I can do the fight recap after I actually fight this thing. So see how it goes at the competition. So I guess look forward to that. Check me out on my Facebook page. Check the links down below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.